My Lords, the gender pay gap has fallen by approximately a quarter in the last decade. It was a Conservative government that introduced gender pay gap reporting, building on the robust equal pay protections already in the Equality Act. And this has motivated employers to look at their pay data and improve workplace equality. To accelerate progress, we've supported legislation to enhance flexible working, extend redundancy protection for those on maternity leave and introduce carers' leave. Thank the noble lady for that, that answer and particularly welcome the flexible working initiative. I wonder if the government has made any assessment of how quickly we might get to equal pay given those endeavours and reduce the expected date of equal pay of 2044. And can I invite the noble lady and the ministers to support Labour policy that we should enshrine in law a full right to equal pay for black, Asian and ethnic minority people and disabled people and, of course, do phasing in to help employers? Can I invite the noble lady and the minister to say that she thinks that's a good idea? Um, so, in response to the noble lady's first question, as she understands very well, there are a number of different factors that influence how quickly uh, the gender pay gap uh, will decline. But obviously, there is so much research now on the value of a diverse workforce and how that improves uh, profitability and competitiveness. I think we hope uh, it will accelerate. In relation to um, uh, ethnicity pay gap uh, reporting. Uh, the noble lady will be aware this is 2.3%, so much smaller uh, than the gender pay gap. Um, and we are working on promoting our guidance on how to address this through employer groups in relation to um, uh, the number of, uh, in relation to disability reporting uh, following the successful court action. Uh, we are reviewing our responses to the consultation. My Lords, um, would the Minister agree that the value of any employee um, is a, should be based on the contribution that they are going to make to the organisation, uh, not what they were earning before? Research by the charity Fawcett found that 61% uh, of job applicants uh, asked about uh, previous salary history, said that it damaged their confidence to negotiate a better salary. So wouldn't she agree that this requirement bakes in gender, race and disability uh, inequality and prevents people on lower salaries ever making the salary strides that they need? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, of course, these were some of the questions that we um, were exploring in our pay transparency pilot, which looked at the impact of putting, <coughs> requiring employers to put salary information into their job recruitment advertisements and also not asking about previous um, salaries. And we do plan to publish the methodology for that so that employers um, can adopt it. Um, and we will also be doing more work to look at the challenges of implementation. Does my noble friend, the Minister, share my concern in particular about the pay gap, the gender pay gap in pension terms, which just accumulates in historic terms to create a very serious problem in the future? Um, my noble friend is absolutely right, and uh, DWP published an official <laughs> measure of the gender pensions gap in June of last year, which is currently 35% uh, in private pensions. The reforms that we brought in, which will mean that uh, th 3 million women will benefit by over £550 a year by 2030, and that uh, the, gender pay, uh, the pensions gap will equalise by the early 2040s, over 10 years earlier than under previous legislation. My Lords, um, following on the previous supplementary question, I think the uh, noble Baroness, the Minister, was referring to achieving equality in state pensions. The big problem, and what's leading to the, uh, the most of the gender pay, pension gap, is the difference in the caring responsibilities where most uh, care, unpaid care, is undertaken by women. 
the Minister is correct in saying that they have identified the problem. Could she give a commitment to actually come up with a worthwhile solution? Well, I think that, there, as I have already said, the Government is working on a number of uh, different aspects uh, of this, but obviously a critical part in relation to uh, maternity leave and the impact that the Noble Lord rightly says one can see on the gender pay gap um, is our uh, huge commitment to expanding the childcare offer so that no women uh, will be unable to return to work for a lack of childcare support. We've uh, just produced a list of employers that paid below the minimum wage, and in some cases for many, many years. Doesn't this show that we need stronger enforcement powers and more people checking that employers are doing their duty and paying their, their workers correctly? Well, I think um, uh, the noble lord, if I've understood correctly, and forgive if I haven't, but is potentially conflating different things. Obviously, um, the minimum wage is a legal uh, requirement, um, and the equal pay legislation addresses the same uh, in relation uh, to gender and other aspects. What we are seeking to do through uh, enabling activities around flexible working, for example, but also maximising transparency uh, and celebrating the success of those employers who have a truly diverse workforce is to use multiple levers to get to the same goal. My Lords, uh, since we've got such progress in dealing with the gender pay gap, might we also turn our attention to trying to persuade employers of the importance of helping parents most of them women who have taken time out from their careers to bring up children back into the workforce with the same status at which they left it. Um, um, my noble friend is absolutely right, and obviously part of that uh, is about the time uh, that it takes for working parents uh, to get back. Um, into the workforce, and again, I would say our commitments um, starting this April and building up so that there will be 30 hours of free childcare for every uh, family with a child nine months old and above will be crucial for achieving this. My Lord, I, I'd like to ask the Minister about mandatory reporting. Um, as there is mandatory reporting and needs to be more, but at the same time, when is the government going to get tougher? On, on taking proceedings against those companies who don't report in their um, annual report and who do not uh, continue to, to ensure that the Equal Pay Act is, is, is committed to, um, because there, there is, there's not any companies really being taken to court on this issue, and the government needs to step up on this. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm more than happy to um, take that back to the department. Obviously, the mandatory reporting applies to companies with more than 250 employees. I wasn't aware of the cases the noble lady refers to, but I'm happy to pick that up. My Lord's request, flexible working, has made major strides for women since it was introduced. But what if companies of a certain size were also required <laughs> to include possible flexible working options in their recruitment uh, when they're advertising for these posts. Um, she may be aware that a recent trial in Zurich led to a massive third more women being hired for senior positions. So wouldn't the Minister agree with me that a similar trial in the UK would be worth undertaking? Yeah. Well, I think a number of uh, businesses do offer flexible working from day one. There's obviously a legal duty to do so from 26 weeks employment. But I think, you know, as, as all noble lords will recognise, we've seen a tremendous change in patterns of work following the pandemic, particularly flexibly between the workplace and home. Uh, and I think there's increasing natural adoption of those approaches. My lords, in relation to the gender pension deficit, is it the case that um, when women are getting divorced and they may not have legal advice, that they're not taking the correct decisions in terms of assuming that the, the matrimonial, former matrimonial home is the largest asset and not getting the pension split on divorce? So could we have some data that actually illuminates this and some better communication to women in those situations? 
Mm. My noble friend, as ever, makes a very good point, and I think that's something that I would be happy to meet with her afterwards and explore how we could make that a reality. Yeah.